Because if you ever identify what you want to do, you'll start tapping into your passion. You can't turn any profit until you find out what your passion is. Mm. And usually finding out what you want to do comes down to two questions. What causes you the most pain and where do you experience the most pleasure? Mm -hmm. Pain is an incredible indicator. We just want to numb pain. We just want to take a pill and make pain go away. We even pray and say, God, just, just make the pain go away. No, let the pain stay for a minute. Because pain indicates where you're called to serve. Pain, pain reveals to you what you can alleviate. Because you can't alleviate something that you can't be touched by. Alright? Number four, we have false expectations of others involved. This is going to cause you a lot of grief in your life if you don't take care of it now. They didn't help me. They weren't supposed to. But I feel let down. You know why people feel let down? Or people feel like they, their, their needs weren't met? Because they had unrealistic needs in the first place. <laughs> it's your business. You know why? Because it's yours. That means, and I tell my wife, I tell people that volunteer, I said, I am so prepared to do all this by myself that you can never disappoint me. I'll carry boxes, I'll stay up and put CD labels together, I'll do it all, I don't expect the staff. That way if I get it, I'm just surprised. Dr. Prop, I'm blown away when people actually come through. But guess what, I'm not moved if they don't. That's right. I've never sent out a nasty email, I never put something bad on Facebook about people, my haters and people that ain't supporting me. They ain't supposed to, it's your life. People got problems, understand this, people have issues of their own. All your stuff is secondary. So if you actually think that you have people in your life that are going to put your problems first, you are sadly, you're going to be hurt your whole life until you realize, you know what, if it's going to be, it is up to me. And if you help me, I receive it and I'm, I'm grateful. But I'm not there if you don't. Because all that means is at the end when the spores are divided, there's less ways to cut it. Okay, nobody. <laughs> nobody liked them, but that's the that's truth. The truth. <laughs> And third, and the last thing, number five, is long moves. We're not, we're not successful, we're experiencing failure because we start off with long moves. Mm -hmm. You don't even know why you want to do what you do. Mm -hmm. Habits. I'm going to talk about habits for a little while. This is, we talked about confronting our failures, we talked about embracing our failures. Let's talk about habits. I read a quote uh, a few days ago that said, We are not. There it is. You don't really plan your future as much as you live your habits. Mm -hmm. You show me your habits. I, I, I don't even have to be a prophet. Show me your habits and I'll show you what your future is going to be. Mm -hmm. Because you're going to get what you do. Mm -hmm. Your harvest. You're living this year what you prepared for two years ago. And here, here's where it's hard. Here's where it's hard. Holly, here's where it's hard. If your life right now is not what you want it to be, it's because of a habit. When you talk to professional athletes and they talk about training, that's a habit. They say the difference maker of the game, when the game's online, is habits. Uh, I'm a huge basketball fan, and year before last, uh, in the uh, Western Conference, there was uh, Denver and Los Angeles. And Kobe had went out to Denver, the Nuggets, and Carmelo, I think, dropped like 45 points that night. Carmelo ripped. I mean, he just went to town on them. And at the end of the game, they asked Kobe what happened. He said, I wasn't ready. I wasn't conditioned. Because, of course, Denver has high altitudes. It's, it affects your oxygen. It cuts your lung capacity. You know what he did? The team left and went to L.A. the next day to get ready for the next, next game. Kobe stayed in Denver and trained. After a full game, the next day, all day trained and took a red eye to play because he said, I'm not coming back here unconditioned again. Mm. <laughs> that's a hard thing to teach people. Mm -hmm. You have to train for it. You have to change your habits. Whatever you're doing that's not producing results, do the opposite. Get up early. I'll be sleep. Okay. <laughs> you're right. You're sleepy. So you... Successful people don't get a lot of sleep sometimes. <laughs> People want, people want to be successful and comfortable. You have to choose one. You can get all the rest. You can have all the events. You can go to everybody's parties. You can go where everybody else goes. Or you can be successful. We watched an um, interview with um, Will Smith on Oprah Winfrey. 
and he said something that just blew me away. He was talking about when he first got in the business. He said, when I got in the business, he said, I didn't think I was as good looking as everybody else in the business, and I knew I wasn't as talented. He said, but the thing that set me apart, get ready, I had a ridiculous work ethic. Mm -hmm. He said, I'll work harder than anybody. If, if my competition runs five miles, I'll run eight. Mm -hmm. Because I've got to be that much better because I'm not blessed with natural talent. Mm -hmm. See, you may not have the natural inclination to start your business, but if you work hard, mm -hmm. then anybody else in your industry, you will be known mm -hmm. as that person, that go-to person. Mm -hmm. The important decision, the, the, the most important decision you can make is what's important to you, and the second most important decision you make is who gets to share your time. Mm -hmm.